I want to welcome you to the congregation of Hobbit Shalom, uh, who graciously lets LCA use their building on a fairly regular basis, and it's it just it's very very difficult to um, put into work how much we appreciate that, because otherwise we would not be able to bring you these events. Uh, we want to welcome our debate candidates. We have uh, Wayne Losey with Board One, Deborah Plunkett. Board One, the candidates are seated in ward order and then alphabetically within the ward. So uh, then we have Jesse Jager, Ward Two, Bill Trahan, Bill Trahan, Ward Two. Uh, Darren Sear could not come tonight. <clears throat> he had to go out of town with his sons, and uh, so he could not make it. Then he's board three, and Ron Mendez is his opponent in board three. <laughs> board four, we have uh, Richard Lucci. <laughs> and his opponent, Ariana Murrell. Uh, and then we have board five. And the incumbent is not running. So we have three new contenders. First is Seth Albaum. And Diana Chakutis. And Jack Kia. We welcome them. And we also welcome a couple of other um, officials and candidates who are in the room. And that would include... Um, Capano, who is uncontested. <laughs> and you can all see one <laughs> And also, Rick Ford is not uh, contested, and he could not come tonight because he also had to go out down taking a child away to college. And uh, Charlie Gallo with the school committee is here. Did I miss anyone who might not be on this sheet that I have? Okay, great. Uh, we have a few people here from the press. Uh, well, we have Seth with uh, Manhattan's. <laughs> He's pulling double duty. I think he has some help tonight. His uh, wife looks like she might be helping out. Uh, Cassie Vitale with Lynn Camp. And Franklin. Franklin. Where it gives more room for people to walk back and forth. Dirk is up with Elmer. Did I pass that correctly? Scooting in between, so I don't want anyone to hit the Okay. Well, thank you for being here. We want to thank all of our citizens for coming out tonight because I know, even though you're not running for office and you're not putting in quite as much time as these guys possibly, you're still taking time from a very, very busy schedule to come out and listen to see what they have to say so that you can make an important okay, decision keep this picture, when so. you go to the voting yes. uh, The Lynn Community Association Board, we have a few members here tonight. We have Bob Connolly in the blue shirt right over there in front of our uh, banner. <laughs> and a former board member and uh, sometimes moderator, very often in fact, uh, Tom Sheehan, where's Tom? And then we have another board member, uh, two in the back there, Douglas and Duncan Maitland. And myself, I happen to be Mary Trahan, I'm president of LCA. And Tyrone Hawkins, also and probably much better known as the Lyrical Genie, <coughs> is going to be our moderator. <laughs> and we
both pride in ownership and the Lynn community through beautification, education, recreation, and possibly most importantly, neighborly relationships. It is hard to uh, overestimate the value of a neighborly relationship. <laughs> The Lincoln Community Association does not endorse any candidate for any election at any time. Our purpose in presenting these forums is to provide them voters with an opportunity to compare and contrast all of the candidates before making your choice for your city government and school. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass this over to our moderator, Ty Hello, and thank you for coming out. My name is Tyron Hawkins, also known as Walnut the Lyrical Genie, uh, recording and performance artist. I'm um, happy to be asked to come out and moderate this event. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the debate rules. Uh, each candidate will be allowed two minutes instruction, introduction, sorry. Candidates will present in left to right seated order a yellow flag will be displayed by the timekeeper 15 seconds before time is up. A red flag will be displayed when time is finished. Moderator will ask questions which have been submitted anonymously by voters in the community. Questions will be answered from right to left as seated. Questions will then pass to each person's left until all candidates have had an opportunity to respond. Each candidate will have up to 90 seconds to answer each question. If any candidate makes a remark which is directed toward another specific candidate, the candidate will be allowed 45 seconds to respond or review. Following approximately 75 minutes of questions and answers, each candidate from right to left seated order will be allowed one and a half minutes to make closing statements. Candidates who do not respect timekeeping rules may be disqualified from participating in the remainder of the debate. So the yellow flag timekeeping will be applied throughout the debate. Um, due to time constraints, we will ask the audience to please hold your applause at the end of the debate. And please silence or turn off your cell phones. Okay. Are we ready? Okay. All right, so we're going to start off with the questions. <laughs> Introduction. Okay. Now, I'm oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> All right, so now the candidates will be allowed two minutes of introduction. Um, so we're starting from the left to the right, from your left. So that should be over here, stage right. Okay, first candidate, please. Good evening, everyone. I'm a lifelong Westland resident. I graduated from 
way back. I've been married for 27 years. My husband is. We have two children and a grandchild. My two children have one who in school systems. Um, I've been involved in various organizations in the city, PTO, uh, Little League, Civic Association. Um, I'm currently employed at Old Town Italian Cuisine and Land, the manager down there. I just feel I'm going to be a full-time counselor. I'll be around. I have a genuine love for the city and the ward. That's why I decided to run. And um, I just want to make Ward 5 a better place for everybody, for children and their children to live. Thank you. First, I'd like to thank the Link Community Association for all of their candidate forums over the years and for helping me become more informed. Their annual fleet sweep to the sea, resource fairs, blood drives, park cleanups, and other citywide community building efforts. And thanks everyone for coming out tonight and taking an interest in Lynn's future. Some of you may know me already through LynnHappens.com, the Downtown Lynn Neighborhood Association, and other projects and organizations I've been involved with over the last several years, both downtown and citywide. I'd like to take this opportunity to give a brief background and some of the reasons why I'm running. I'm recently married, and my wife Jennifer and I make our home in Central Square, uh, right here in downtown Lake. We're both strongly committed to the neighborhood and the city as a whole. I teach media literacy, specifically video production, broadcast journalism, at Chelsea High School, and I've, I've held both media and non-media public sector and private sector jobs over the years. I've dedicated my professional career, as a matter of fact, to providing training and opportunities for people to be able to express themselves and engage with their communities. Now, I want to provide a better way to engage with city government, improve public safety, schools, parks, roads, and do a better job of welcoming new businesses along with the jobs and tax revenues they bring to the city. I'm running for all of Ward 5 and for a better link, from Seaport Landing to Pine Hill at the edge of Linwoods. I love the variety of living we have in Ward 5, retirement living, single family homes, multifamily, apartments, condos, lofts, all kinds of businesses and cultures from everywhere. I will make myself accessible through telephone, email, social networks, traditional mail, or even by text message to listen to any and all concerns and ideas and reach out to make things happen. I already have a record of doing so. Some of you may have noticed the new dome and barrels on Market Street. Uh, I got to work with uh, Brennan Crichton and Community Development to help make that happen. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. I would like to thank everyone for coming out this evening, and also uh, the LCA and the moderators, Mary and Tyrone, for uh, hosting this debate. My name is Ariana Morel Rosario, and I'm running as a candidate for Lynn City Council Ward 4. And I'd like to share a little history about myself. I am a first generation Latin American who came to Lynn as a young single mother after graduating business school in 1986. As a passionate and driven young woman, I overcame much hardship and adversity as I struggled to build a life and future for myself and my children. I am currently married and I have two children. Through hard work, dedication, and commitment, I built a successful national franchise tax preparation company in the city I brought my first home in the Diamond District seven years ago, which I fixed up and invested quite a bit of money in to make it a beautiful home for my family and my tenants. I decided to run for Lynn City Council at the urging of fellow business owners and homeowners who felt my tenacity of spirit, principles, and integrity would bring a level of energy and dynamics to the council that would create a force of change as to how our city's affairs are managed and governed. I believe that my skill sets in taxation, management, finance, and advocacy will allow me to bring vision and leadership to the council and help bring about greater transparency and accountability within our city government with the goal of bringing greater hope and prosperity 
to our residences and businesses alike. So again, I wanted to thank everyone for coming out and I look forward to the debate. Thank you. I love my job. I love, love helping people. But I get phone calls that they leave messages sometimes at night. And I'm tired and tired. And the message kind of like, you know, and I, I say to myself, wait a minute. If they're calling me, it's important to them. So I call them back and I address their problems. I give them the phone, my cell phone numbers, and I'm trying to contact my constituents. I love my constituents. I, I, I want to live for them and I want, want them to be, have a better life. Uh, the monitor of about neighborhoods. I'm all for the neighborhood in the city of Wynn. Uh, I'm doing what I can. I got a record in downtown or Union Street. It used to be all drive houses. Now it's single family homes. I, 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 been, I took with the artist to put with uh, with, with uh, he lived in the uh, corner up above. That was my idea. Bike patrol, uh, patrols. So I'm uh, doing what I can for the city of Lynn. I want your support. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you everybody for coming out tonight. Uh, my name is Ron Mendez and I am running for uh, the Ward 3 City Council seat. And I wanted to share a little bit about why I decided to run for City Council. Um, if you want to learn more about me as a person, uh, there are information cards in the back on the table for those that are here. Uh, for those of you at home, uh, you can look up my website at www.ronmendez.com. Um, but the reason I, I'm, I'm running for City Council here in Lynn is because I feel so passionate about the, the potential uh, that the city has in terms of development, in terms of its resources. We all know the resources that Lynn has. We have the waterfront that has so much promise. We have the beaches, we have the, the woods, we have our proximity to Boston. We have so many things working in our favor. However, um, we keep finding ourselves kind of lagging behind the region. And I think we need, in this city, new leadership uh, to take us to that next level, to bring us uh, you know, to, a higher, to a higher level so that we can catch up with the rest of the area and, and just, in general, do better as a city. Uh, I have that experience. I, I, you know, as you can see from my experience, I've worked in other communities. And I'm, I'm so excited to bring that to the city council. When my, when my wife was in the audience here today and I decided to open our business in Lynn, it's because we we saw the promise. We saw. The, we believe in Lynn. We believe in, the, in in what Lynn has to offer, and I know all of you do too as well. So I look forward, and I hope that you'll uh, be able to vote for me on uh, September 17th and November 5th. And thank you very much. Good night. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for coming tonight. I'd like to especially thank Mary Johan and uh, Tyrone for you know, all their efforts to do wonderful things. And, the city. Uh, my name is William Trahan Jr. Uh, I'm the current Ward 2 Councilor. I've been there for seven terms. I'm 53 years old. I'm married. Uh, my wife's here tonight, Lee. I've been married for 23 years. I have uh, two children, boy and girl, 18 and uh, 20 years old. Um, I have owned and operated a business in the city of Lynn, Trahan Rufin. It's a business that's been in the city for four generations, so over 100 years. So we're, we're our lifelong lenders, we're not going anywhere, we've been here forever. We are, love this city. I think that I've been, a, uh, I've done a real great job in Ward 2. I think you've seen a lot of improvements. I've worked on the parks, I've worked on the playgrounds. I've fixed up a lot of the streets. We've done over the again, bridge area. Uh, we've, we've addressed the flooding down Eastern Ave and up through uh, up around Buchanan Bridge. Like I say, I'm on uh, roughly 15 or 16 uh, committees. In the city, all over the years, I've got involved in all these committees and worked, you know, worked my way up. So I feel as though I have a lot of strength at City Hall and often, you know, bring a lot to the table for what too. And I think that's why I get a lot done. So at this, you know, but, so. but uh, just like to thank everybody again for coming and um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, I would also like to thank my friends on the Lynn Community Association board. Uh, my name is Jesse Jager, and I'm running to be your board to city councilor. About a decade ago, my wife and I moved to Lynn looking for a diverse community with lots of things going on to raise our young family. We have fallen in love with the city, 
From the woods and the beaches, the downtown with the great arts and culture scene, we have enjoyed all the opportunities that Lynn has given us. Both of my children, Lord and Mary, who are in the back there, uh, attend Ingalls Elementary School. And I'm an active parent leader there, serving on the PTO, as well as on the Parent and School Improvements Council. I've helped, helped bring in thousands of dollars of grants to Ingalls so the kids can have extracurricular activities there. I joined the Lynn Community Association Board, I'm a past board member, to help foster a deeper sense of community by helping plan city cleanups, community forums like this one, and many other community events. I helped found the Martin Luther King Day of Service that has brought hundreds of volunteers to nonprofits across the city for the past two years, two years making service opportunities available for people of all ages in the world. And I helped found Lynn Parents Organizing for a Better Education, which has helped work to hold the Lynn Public Schools more accountable to the needs of parents and families, because I understand that more, the more parents are involved in our schools, the better our schools will be. Now I want to bring that type of creative, forward-looking leadership to Ward 2 and Lynn City Council. I have a master's degree in organizational leadership, and I've been, made a professional career out of helping nonprofit organizations through periods of change and growth. Lynn is a community that is, that is changing and growing, and I feel like I have the skills and experiences to help bring that brighter future forward. I look forward to the thoughtful debate tonight. Achievements 
and the accomplishments that we've had up to date. And uh, I, I certainly can't, I, I can only touch on them, but uh, Gowdy Park, uh, Black's Pond Park. Uh, we're going to be looking at a turbine on the uh, Linway that's going to save water and sewer uh, rate payers uh, significant savings. Uh, I want to bring solar panels to Lintech, and uh, it, renewable energy is the, uh, the wave of the future, and we all have to embrace it. And uh, I want to continue to be your ward counselor, and I look forward to this debate and talking more about uh, my goals and, and, and accomplishments. Thank you for all, all of you for being here. Thank you. Uh, please pay attention to the yellow and red flags. And please uh, hold your applause. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Uh, I also want to give, a, as I say, a shout out to Cheryl here, who's um, who sat in for us for the last time. Keep it. So thank you very much. Okay. So I guess now I'm going to go on to the question. This question is, if you could make just one capital improvement to your ward, what would it be and why? And this is starting from right to left, I believe. So it's going to start. We'll start from you, Wayne. My capital improvement that I would like to see in Ward 1 is what is currently happening in Ward 1. Uh, which will revitalize the business in Ward 1 and will certainly be a... Ward 1 is the gateway to the city of Lynn. Well, currently, Wyoming Square uh, has a lot of traffic going through it. We're going to be looking at a $5.5 million bond improvement on Broad Wyoming Square and Broadway. Currently, National Grid is working and replacing all of their gas lines. By next year, we should be uh, complete. Unfortunately, it's going to take time. It's a lot like birthing pains, but once it's complete, we're gonna, there are going to be huge traffic improvements. Uh, it's going to help the business community. It's going to be aesthetically much better. So I think that's exciting, and along with uh, some other structural uh, improvements around the city, uh, Magnolia Park is slated for $50,000 in improvements. Looking forward to seeing that done. That will be the fourth part of the board one that will have seen a major improvement. Um, and, and I'm just happy to be the ward one counselor, and I'm looking forward to uh, accomplishing much more. Thank you. I actually agree with Wayne. I think economic development is, is a huge, huge um, thing coming up for Ward 1. Um, I, I, um, I frequent a lot of Ward 1 businesses. I've been every Ward 1 business so far in the past couple of months and um, made a personal connection. I'll continue to get that business and encourage others to do so. But the question uh, is capital improvement. I think the top priority that I will um, take on as the next Ward 1 City Council will be constituent services. Um, our DPW is completely understaffed. Our DPW is completely under underfunded. I attended the budget meeting at the um, council a few weeks ago, maybe a month ago. I would have voted to uh, not approve that budget. And the reason I say that is because we do not have enough funds in the DPW. I will be a strong, strong advocate to get people off the list. There's a list that's going on for years. People are on the list. I met a, a young guy about uh, three weeks ago knocking on doors. He told me he plows his own street because his son has serious medical conditions, and he's terrified that an ambulance won't get to his street. That's unacceptable. He's a taxpayer. He's a homeowner. This dad and his wife have enough stress going on. They need an emergency vehicle getting up to their street. As your next Ward 1 City Council, I will give 100% of my time and my effort to fully fund the DPW and get the in place for that. <coughs> we 
we have too many children in uh, War II attending classrooms that were designed for the Great Depression. If we want a modern workforce uh, and kids educated in modern schools, we need to invest in our schools now. Uh, on September 17th, there's going to be a bond vote for replacing uh, Marshall Middle School. I strongly encourage you all to support that bond. It just makes financial sense. Uh, bond rates are at their historic lows. Uh, the state is going to pay 80% of the bill. And we're going to get modern classrooms for our students at Marshall. Uh, but that's just the beginning. We have many other school needs in terms of improving and upgrading the infrastructure in our educational system. As I said before, too many of our young people are learning in classrooms that are outdated for the modern times, they're unsafe, and we need to improve uh, the school buildings that the children of War II and the children of all across Lynn attend. Uh, I'm going to uh I'm going to agree with my uh, with my opponent a little bit on the schools. I think that's probably one of the biggest capital improvements that the city needs. I think this new school that's coming is very important. I think the state is, is going to give us 80%. The schools are, you know, we've got 30 kids in the class. It's not right. They, they should be down to 18 to 20 kids so the kids are educated properly. So this vote coming up is, is you know, very important. Uh, something else in what too, something I've been working on, I think, number two of the capital improvements is the parks and playgrounds. Something that I've uh, been passionate about over the years. We've just got the key playground over. We put about six, seven hundred thousand dollars into it. Um, we got sixty thousand dollars slate for Cook Street. We just put a uh, first garden that's been in the playground for seventy years in there. So we're starting to get the uh, Cook Street playground back. And, and um, you know, we just did over Henry Ave playground. So um, you know, the streets. The streets need to be repaved. I know I hear all the constituents when you go door to door. You hear all the things, but. Um, those are, those are my priorities and things that, you know, that I think we need to address. Um, well, I think it goes without saying, uh, being uh, from Ward 3, that the most important project that is coming up is, of course, the Marshall Middle School. Uh, we need to all get behind that project because it's not just a Ward 3 project. It is a, an entire city of Lynn project. Uh, and as, you know, I'm, my wife and I are part-time um, buyers brokers for real estate agents. And we talk to young families with small children uh, that you know are considering Lynn versus another city, and the number one reason why they choose another city is because of their concerns with the state of our public schools. Um, it is it's keeping our property values down. It's keeping our tax base low. We need to invest in our public schools, and this vote coming up on September 17th is the linchpin. It is the beginning of either success or another decade of waiting. Uh, so we all need to get behind this project, and I hope you can all join me in voting yes on September 17th for the Marshall Middle School. Thank you. Right. Uh, in Ward 4, right now, uh, Sagamore Street is a priority, and the housing authority is doing it. And then on Union Street, uh, on the front of Union Court, if you, see, if you look around the drive by, you see a parking lot here in the works, going to five houses that come there, shortly. High Rock Park has been done. Carrington School has been done since I've been Ward Counselor. And uh, the streets, uh, the problem is the, the state cut Chapter 90 money by, in half. That's money based. The city's getting for the streets. But uh, I have five or six slides slid in the highlands to get repaid. I talked to the DPW Commissioner today. He said hopefully they'll, they get, they'll get another portion of Chapter 90 money. We, we do realize that. So I'm, I'm doing what I can with what we have. Uh, it's all, it's all about money in a damn thing funny, as we know. Well, the way that I see it now, um, one of the greatest investments that we can make in terms of capital improvement are to our homes. Um, our homes are, you know, bring up property values when they're in good repair. Um, they make our streets look nice. And one of, the, one of the measures that I would like to implement when I become elected is to implement a property tax rebate program to help struggling homeowners um, with property repairs uh, and to help, help combat urban blight. So we would give them some type of uh, credit for doing certain types of repairs on their property. 
Now, we all know that we, people are still struggling from the economic downturn that we had a few years ago. Uh, people have not recovered financially, and so a lot of homeowners are still struggling uh, with property maintenance issues, and um, and so that's a big concern for me. And you know, because of the field that I work in, I see a lot of things. Um, so I would like to help our homeowners because I think they, they are part of the backbone of our city. Because we can only choose one thing for the benefit of Ward Five. I'm going to support the Marshall School in Ward 3. Because otherwise, we won't have a new Cobbett anytime school, uh, soon. Uh, investing in schools, number one. And uh, I'll cheat a little bit. Human capital, very important. PW, public safety. Within our city, 
if we have to find a way to better communicate to, to the resident, to everyone, so that we're on the same page and the same boat, when we're on the same page and the same boat, then we are working together as a city. We have to communicate through all kinds of sources, not just the newspaper, media, internet, new, um, flyers, billboards, etc., etc. You know, that's the key. And through the word of mouth, also. Thank you. <coughs> well, I know certain websites are available. The DPW has one, the school department has their own websites. Most places, even churches, if there's a school closing, if something is canceled, most places do have their own websites if you're not getting the paper. A lot of people nowadays is Facebook, are texting. I don't know how else we can get the information out to people, but there are websites available for every organization that is in the city. Thank you. I took matters into my own hands in 2008, the first version of LitHappens.com. I started the Downtown Neighborhood Association mainly as an email list at first so that we could all communicate with each other in the neighborhood and share the projects that we were working on, let everybody know when there would be a cleanup, for example, or whether it was an issue or concern that we had to meet about. You have to meet people where they are. What I learned in college is know your audience. <coughs> and then use the best medium or channel to reach that audience that you have. Now I've seen improvements in the city website. I've seen improvements uh, even to the item. Although now it's not accessible for all uh, that stay in business somehow. Uh, but I will continue to do the, everything that I can do using Facebook, WorkFiveLink.com. There's also the Pine Hill Civic Association Facebook page that awards specifically when Happens.com is citywide and it's politics free and I keep it that way to, to the best of my ability anyway so that it's a place everybody can go and see what's going on. Okay, so we're talking about valuable information, and I, I assume that that means valuable information coming from our local government. So um, we have, of course, our open meeting laws that require certain information to be disseminated to the residents. Um, when you go on to the City of Lynn's website, there's sort of a mishmash of information, and there's some pertinent information that is not being disseminated. So I would say that we could use a, some type of part-time compliance officer in the city to make sure that the, um, there is compliance with the open meeting law so that the valuable information that we need in order to be informed and make important decisions um, is, is, is met and disseminated to the residents. Thank you. Thank you. What I do, what I do, I just tell Jean Curley and Leslie Greenberg, and all the boys will be covered. So actually, um, actually, we have a reverse 9-11 in the city of Lynn, and you, and I, everybody got a follow-up show up in the city, snow emergencies and stuff like that. That's one thing. Also, I'm old-fashioned. If it's, a, if it's an issue in board for, I just write letters to the street. With repaving, I can lay together a letter. If there's a uh, problem with drugs, I turn the letter. I'm old fashioned, I like letters. And Gene Curley and Leslie Greenberg. <laughs> hey, uh, this is actually a very important uh, question for ward counselors uh, specifically because I know um, from my experience on the board of directors of the Linearity Chamber of Commerce, we would oftentimes find out about ordinances that, that affected the business community um, and we would find out about them that they were being enacted uh, rather than being able to speak with city councilors ahead of time. So, you know, we became a little proactive, but it's understandable that most residents are not able to do that. Um, oftentimes there are variances before the Zoning Board of Appeals or requests for special permits before the city council that people just don't know about because the only notice that goes out is those little minute legal notices in the newspaper or you have to come to City Hall to know about the notice. Um, so, so we have to be proactive and we have to use a lot of different ways of getting the word out to people. 
If it affects the butters, we need to go to the butter's house and make sure they know something's going on that might affect their home. Their home. Um, as far as the rest of the neighborhood is concerned, we need to use the internet, we need to use reverse 911, we need to use Facebook, we need to use all different avenues to as that said, meet people where they are at. Uh, but that is a very, this is a very important issue for board counselors specifically. So, um, thank you for the question. Um, I just want to talk, touch a little on um, what they said earlier. Um, if you go on the website for City Hall, you'll see on Tuesday nights everything that's going on. If there's a Board of Appeals or if there's a plan for what, what, you know, what neighborhood it is. I, like uh, Councilor Gucci, I usually will send out letters if there's a neighborhood meeting, if there's a problem in your ward, you know, like on your street. I'll either come down to your house, knock on your door, or you'll get a letter from me saying that something's going on in the ward. If it's a zoning issue, or if it's a neighborhood issue, or if it's a drug issue. Um, we've also done now uh, the reverse 9-11, which I think is pretty good. You all get those calls, like if you got to get a big snowstorm or something. You see the blue lights now up on the uh, street lights. When they're blinking, you got to get your cars off the street. That was very good, I think. I think that took a lot of cars off the street, helps with the, uh, the plowing operations. Uh, we have the journal now, we have the item. I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of forms like this. Maybe in, uh, in this group, they spend a lot of time sending out letters. And as uh, Councilor Pucci said, uh, you know, just, just the neighborhood things that we go to forward school and all different things, people, people get to know. So. Uh, communication <laughs> is one of the most fundamental roles of the Ward Council. And uh, I, you know, We'll just be out in the neighborhoods or knocking and talking to the neighbors in Ward 2 during the election year. I'll be out there every week uh, talking to uh, the people in Ward 2, uh, letting them know about services, helping them uh, access resources from uh, 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 City Hall. Um, I'll be out doing community forums, uh, um, actually organizing and making them happen. I'll show up at PTO meetings. Um, another issue is, is that a lot of our residents uh, either don't speak English or speak limited English. We need to figure out ways to communicate with uh, uh, those populations with better interpretation and translation services. And then, of course, there's lots to be done with technology. I think that over the last couple of years, uh, some aspects of the um, uh, um, of our uh, city offices have used uh, social media better. But there's a lot of ways that we can be using uh, um, communication technologies to let residents know about services, what's going on in the city, issues around uh, uh, um, uh, ordinances and, and things like that that the city council are working with. And I'll be out in the neighborhoods knocking on doors uh, every week uh, to help uh, the Ward 2 residents know what's going on. We do not always see in the item. I'm glad you're not seeing the item because Mr. Losey seems to be in the front page a lot these days. <laughs> 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 I'm, I'm a big fan of technology, Facebook, with a click of the button, I reach hundreds and hundreds of people. I've, I've been in touch with people I've met in high school, I've been in touch with everybody. I'm all for technology, but with that being said, I'm meeting tons of seniors. They don't have Facebook, they don't have a computer, nor do they want one. Um, neighborhood meetings, are, that's a fabulous way to reach out to the community for open communication. I'd like to see precinct meetings. Have a precinct meeting instead of clusters of neighborhoods, that's fabulous, and I wish I could be in every single neighborhood every single week. It's just a large, large ward. So precinct meetings, maybe monthly, maybe bi-monthly, and have neighbors come to one location. It could be the Knights of Columbus, Knights of Pythias, schools. I'm sure we'll find a spot, uh, put it out there. I've been, I've been putting literature out there now for the past couple of months, reaching people the good old-fashioned way. People in the room talking about issues. It's great to have technology, but um, I say it all the time as a mom. Kids doing this, it, it, it's, it's annoying. Back in the good old days, we talked face to face and had conversations, had arguments, but at the end of the day, we communicated. I'm a huge fan of precincts having meetings. So I would propose the next board on the city council. <coughs> Ten years ago, when I first ran for counselor, I had a website. I was the only candidate at that time, and it was www.votelosey.com, and that's currently my uh, website. I also am active on Facebook, and I think uh, it's important to use the social media. And as my colleagues mentioned, a few of them, 
we have reverse 911 to communicate important messages to the residents in Lynn. There are many ways we can communicate. And being out into the, in the community is very important. As a counselor, I regularly have attended for 10 years Sluice Pond Association meetings, Flax Pond Association meetings. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've been coaching Wyoming Little League, Babe Ruth Baseball, Eastland Park Warner. I'm in the community, and that's important. Um, we also need to communicate the good old-fashioned way, as you heard earlier. And that's what I like to do as a counselor. If there's an issue, I communicate. I send out a letter to the neighborhood, and we address the issue, and we'll have a neighborhood meeting. I've also used, uh, I uh, work on uh, periodicals that I've issued about a half dozen uh, periodicals called Within Ward 1, and I've sent it out to the entire ward. It's a lot of work, and I enjoy doing that, and uh, I want to continue as your Ward 1 counselor communicating. Thank you. Next question. Many cities have revitalized themselves, bringing in businesses and people from other cities. Many businesses in Lynn um, leave the city. What suggestions do you have to have for bringing in businesses to Lynn besides the waterfront and the art history? Okay. Um, last Thursday, the governor signed a, a bill that I sponsored as a home rule petition called the anti dumping law. Currently on the books, it's a $300 fine for somebody who's caught illegally dumping. Under my bill, Anyone caught illegally dumping will now be fined up to $5,000 and three times the cost of cleanup. This is important. Lynn <coughs> needs to be cleaned up. And I want to also touch base on the importance of what I mentioned earlier with the $5.5 million bond for roadway improvements in Lynn. We're not talking about just some grind and repay. This is going to be entirely new roadways, curbing, drainage, utilities. Uh, this is important infra infrastructure that will not just deliver traffic, allow traffic to flow better, but it's going to be aesthetically much improved for the city of Lynn. And this is important, and I'm proud of the fact that I'm able to work with our legislators <coughs> and that we can get these things done and improve Lynn and see these improvements ongoing. Thank you. Zoning. Okay. Our zoning is completely outdated. That's why our businesses are leaving the city. I sit in at the government affair meetings at the Lynn Chamber of Commerce. I go and I take notes and I listen, which is key. I need to listen. That's what a counselor needs to do. I met a commercial realtor and I said to him, Please, can you give me five minutes of your time? Do you have any investors interested in the city of Lynn? Where are they and why aren't they here? And he looked me right in the face and he said, yes, I do. I have investors and they're very interested in the city of Lynn. And then they start the process and they deal with the outdated zoning and they get frustrated because it's a big obstacle course to bring a business into the city. So what they do, they go to Salem, where for some reason it's a lot easier. As the next board one city councilor, I will work with the city council to make our businesses downtown, make our, our city business friendly, not scare our investors away, but invite them. And as a city council, I can reach out and contact them and say, my name is Deb Plunkett. I'm the Ward 1 City Councilor. What can I do for you today to help you bring your business here? I'm here. I'm available. I'm accessible. I'm accountable. And I'm here to help you. Thank you. So the new Lynn Coalition recently uh, uh, released a report, uh, and in it they talked about how, uh, you know, we've gone through a pretty tough economic time over the last 10 years, but uh, Massachusetts has largely come out of it. In fact, there's more jobs in Massachusetts now than there were 10 years ago. But here in, Massachusetts, here in Lynn, we actually have nearly 1,400 less jobs than we had 10 years ago. And so creating jobs in Lynn is a critical issue that new leadership needs to take on. A couple of things that I would do uh, to address that. First of all, um, you know, one of the biggest growth sectors in Massachusetts right now is green economy jobs. 
So let's work on bringing more of those to Massachusetts. There's a lot of manufacturing space that GE right now not going to use. Let's work with GE to uh, um, get that uh, uh, manufacturing space back in, in, in production, possibly running out to some of these green economy jobs that are out there uh, that are growing in our community. Um, uh, secondly, let's work with the VOTEC and North Shore Community College and Salem State for more job training in, uh, and to increase skills within um, our workforce here in Lynn. Thirdly, uh, some of the uh, people who create the most jobs in Lynn right now are our immigrant community. A study out of Malden recently showed that immigrants are a high number entrepreneur and they're creating lots of jobs. We need to make it easier for those people in our community to continue to start jobs, uh, create businesses in our communities to grow Lynn's economy.